everyone, hooked on concrete here with another concrete project. This is what we are going to build today, a little house or, a little fairy house as they call them. So, let's get going. Okay before we get started, let's take a look at our setup here. I usually use a turntable. Both of these turntable mechanisms can be bought pretty cheaply, on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. You just attach them to the bottom of your plywood, with the screws and then you have a nice turntable. What I usually do with them is wrap them with shrink wrap to keep the moisture from the concrete from soaking into the board. Most people who make a turntable or lazy susan, they make them round. However, since most the items I make are either square or a rectangle it is easier to just leave them square or rectangle. So what I'm doing here is cutting a piece of foam to fit on top of it, and we will start setting up our house. I usually use strips of foam to block it in. I usually cut them to one and a half inches wide. The width of foam I use is the three quarter inch foam. Okay, here I am setting up the door and trying to make sure that I have enough room for my cornerstones to go in there. These cornerstones I make with a mold. I will leave a link for that in the description as well. Doing it this way, you don't have to use glue or anything because the cornerstones will interlock as you pour. So it seems to work out very nice. Now, what you want to do is to set up the front and back of your house, making exact copies of each other. Because after all, the shape and size of our house will be the same on both of the ends. And so, you can go ahead and figure out and make both exactly the same. This little square I am using here is one and a half inches wide on the big end, which is the same size I make my foam, so it makes it really nice because then I can use it to block in my walls. Well, there's the bottom of the house. I usually use a little speed square to make the peaks of the house. I like to make my house have a 90 degree angle, because it's easier that way. Because, then you have the square to help make sure it's right. It also helps when you go to build the roof later on, because, you know exactly what the angle is going to be with no guessing. So you just get the measurements and make sure they are the same. See how high it is on that side and then you do the exact same thing on the other. You could, make a template. And then, copy it to each, but this seems to work pretty well. So now, we put our door in there and see what the door will look like. Figure out where the center is as we want our door in the center. Put a little mark. Then, we draw our outline around it. This is the exact size and then we need to make it just a little bit bigger than that. This is a piece of half inch foam. I usually use half inch foam for doors and windows. So take the outline, and draw a little bit outside of it. About a quarter inch outside the line. Then we'll cut it out. Always begin with a sharp blade when cutting foam, because if you don't, it will drag and make little round pills all over the place. You can, buy extruded foam, which is the pink or the blue, which is probably better for this. Because it doesn't have the little beads that fall off everywhere. But, it's a lot more expensive than the cheap sheets of foam. 
I had a bunch of the cheap stuff on hand so I decided to just use it. This is a rasp that is usually used for auto body work, but it works good for this as well. These are little half moon glass beads. Clean them off real good and then take a drop of super glue and just put a drop on it, and it will hold together. Then I take these little small ones and make a window. And as you see, the light shines through it real nice. The blue is little round half moon beads. I will put a link for them in the description as well. I will try to list links to all the other materials that we use here, so you can go find them. And so I am drawing an outline here to make sure the door is in the right spot. Then I take a hot glue gun here and put just a little dot on it and glue it down. You only want to lightly glue it and not stick it down too hard. Because, later, when you go to take it out of the form it will stick real hard which makes it difficult to remove from the form. So, use one little dot just to keep it in place so then, it doesn't move around on us. Okay, now we need to figure out where our windows are going to go. I think we'll put them in the center, and even with the eave of the roof. With these, we do the same thing, we just put a little dot of hot glue to hold them in place. This will hold them until we actually pour the concrete. Around our door we will make a nice little entrance way with little square blocks. We want it to be nice and uniform, so we need to shape the foam. We will glue our little blocks right up against it. Make sure to leave enough room around the door so it looks like it could actually open up, and that it is not just pasted on. I need to use the scissors here to remove the facing of the insulation board. Because, after using the rasp, the rasp removes the foam, but leaves the plastic covering on it so, you have to go back and take that off. Here are the little blocks that I cast. We will use these to make a nice little entryway. We will stick them together with a little drop of super glue on each. We need to make the top with the edge of the block pointing down, so it looks like a keystone. I'm trying to get in the right position here so it looks good and then you just build the same thing on the other side. Put one little drop on each one. Super glue holds really fast. They hold it really fast, but are not real strong on fresh concrete. So you do not want to do a whole lot of movement. If you do, it will come apart as the concrete will just flake and pull off if you move around too much. If it does break apart, just glue it again. When you get it in the position you want, just put a drop or two on each one. There's our completed doorway. Here is the mold I used to cast these little blocks, which I have linked to in the description so you can find it. This here is the mold I use to make my corner stones. You can cast these in any color you want with concrete coloring, but for this house we will leave them the natural concrete color. Here I'm unsticking from the insulation so we don't have problems later. Now it is time to build our corner stones. We put them one up, then one down. These are half inch wide stones. So, if you make your house an even number of inches, they should be even with your walls.
I'm using the hot glue gun on these to glue them together. Using the hot glue gun, it will leave a space in between the blocks or the cement will go there. This will make the gaps look like they have been mortared. Then afterwards I put a drop of super glue on them to give them a little more holding power. You can see here that they kind of fall apart if they are moved around a lot. I pull them down so they are easier to work on. You want to try to make sure these blocks are laid in nice and flat and straight up. I am thinking in the future I may take a wooden block to go back up to these, so I can make sure they are even. You want these to be at a 90 degree angle. You can use something straight to push them back into position. And now, for a drop of super glue. I did the same thing for the other one. The foam I am using here is inch and a half wide, you can see it works nice to use the carpenter's square to block it in. I attach the foam with these quilting pins and you can see that they work well. I believe they are 2 inches long. I will put what they are in the description. And so what you do is you go around the outline of the house, with this other foam. You cut the foam just like you do dry wall. You score the one side, then you bend over and snap. And then you cut the back side. Here you have to cut little angles on these. It's really no big deal you just measure and cut. You don't have to be exact. As long as the point goes where you want it it'll keep everything in place. This is what the stick pins look like. I like to keep a hot glue gun going, because you never know when you may knock something loose. So it is ready if you need to re-glue something. Here is where the inch and a half comes in handy, just slide right in there. Use the rasp to file the end and make it look nice. Like I said it's not real critical. The neat thing about these pieces of foam, you can reuse them. As long as you cut them all the same width, you can add pieces together and use them over and over. These ends you wouldn't probably really have to actually put them on but, I always use them to help hold things together. What we have here is the stones that we will use. I received a really good deal on these. These stones are from Amazon and if I remember right they were $4.58 for £5 delivered. I don't know how they ship so cheap. I like to buy my stones from Lowe's and Home Depot and places like that, but a lot of times the rocks they have are just so big and really hard to work with. I saw these little white rocks and I thought they really look nice, so I ordered them. Arrived in two days, so you cannot beat that. What I am doing here is putting rocks all over the bottom trying to fill in the space. Cover up all the insulation with the rocks. I'm using a little pick tool. It works really nice, for getting them into corners and such. And there's different ways in doing this, you can take a handful and toss them in and then spread them, or you can do it one by one, either way will work. Then I use the bottom end of the pick to flatten things out.
These little round things are just the bottom of a paper cup. It was the right size, so I use them to cover the windows. In the past when I did these windows, I ended up with a lot of cleanup. I have found that prevention is much easier than spending time cleaning them up as concrete can be a pain cleaning off. This is a saws all that I use without the blade to vibrate the table. This helps to remove the air bubbles from the pour and allows the concrete to get down and around the rocks. I have been using this little silicon spoon from Betty Crocker. It is usually used for making cakes and frosting, but it works very well for mixing small batches of concrete. It allows you to scrape the bottom of the bowl real nice. Then just smooth it in there get in all the holes in all the cracks. Fast concrete you have to work pretty fast because it starts getting hard within just a few minutes. So the first time you ever cast, you may want to use the regular concrete until you get used to the process. I get impatient when it comes to demolding. I take that back, I don't think this is the quick concrete. This was a new kind I was trying out. It was just a regular professional mix. So it did not set up very fast. I always try to keep a mold handy when I pour. I always seem to make up too much concrete, and I do not like to waste it. So when I have some left over I put it in the mold and make blocks. I am able to make 10 to 15 blocks each time. This would have been wasted. Instead, I am making the blocks I need as I go. It is a win-win situation. Doing it this way there is very little waste. And since this has the pebbles in it, it is a little harder to get in the mold. But, with a little patience we can use this concrete to make blocks too. Now we're cleaning up here. About an hour has passed since I have poured. The concrete is now workable. Try to get all the concrete in all the grooves around the glass beads because the super glue on glass is not a long term hold, so you need to have the concrete in and around the beads to hold it all together. So that's what I'm doing here is, spreading the concrete around. When the water goes away from the top of the concrete, you can usually start working it. Try to fill in all the little holes. Then do the same on the other side. This is the next day. Remove the whole mold, as you don't want nothing pushing on it as you are trying to get it up from the bottom. I use a regular kitchen spatula, or a large putty knife for this. You want to go underneath all the blocks and make sure the glue releases them. Sometimes they just pop loose like that. This is a small wire brush. These are really good for getting into the cracks. This here tool, is a regular dog brush. I find that a dog brush works really well for this. It covers a wide area, and the wire bristles are not too hard so, it does not damage as much. Here I am using a foam sanding block to get the mortar off of the cornerstones. In the future, I may try to tape up the cornerstones so I will not have to do so much cleanup. We'll see how that goes. Maybe, that will help some. And same on the this side, you just go underneath and pry it up. This side will be a little different as you have the door to contend with. So, 
Be sure that you slide under where the door is so you can remove the glue that is holding the blocks. And there we go. Don't worry if some of the rocks fall out, you can always put them back later. So it's no big deal. It happens at times that the concrete will lose its moisture during the pour and not go down and grab all the rocks. But it is easy to fix later. Very seldom do I have a perfect pour. Now we will vacuum up all the mortar we sanded and brushed off. You can see how the turntable really helps. It will really come in handy at the end when we put the house together. Because the house gets heavier and heavier. You don't want to be trying to flip it around. Here we are pulling the blocks that we cast earlier. If you take each of the blocks and rub the corners, it will remove the concrete that overlaps the edge of some of the blocks. Doing that, will help to make sure they are all uniform. This makes them really nice when you go to build your building. Here you can see the blocks are still what they call green. Meaning that they haven't hardened all the way. If you leave them in the mold and let them get hard, they will be very hard to get out of the mold. I always try to remove the blocks the next day while they are still green. Now, we are getting ready to fill in the little holes and replace the missing rocks. Take the spray bottle and spray it, it will not suck the moisture out of the mortar so fast. It will then be easier to work with. Basically what you are doing here is the same process you use when you grout tile. It's pretty much the same principle. You just put a layer on top. Let it harden up a little bit and then you wipe it off. Use the spatula to get it down in all the little holes. The mortar I am using here is quick crete, vinyl patcher. But you can use any type of mortar. You do want to make sure it does not have the pebbles in the mix as it is nearly impossible to fill in the cracks if the mix has pebbles. Here I am using a foam sponge, it has a scratchy pad on one side and foam on the other. I just wet it and smear it around, just like you would if you were grouting. Then you wipe it off. Using paper towels to get a lot of the excess. Doing a little bit of detail work round each of the windows. You do not want mortar to cover your window because then no light will come through. We may want to put a little LED light in this. Now we will use the scratchy side of the sponge. It helps to get a little bit more of the mortar off. This here is also a dog brush. These dog brushes seem to work really nice for this. I am using the regular brush side on this. Now, we will use a detail brush and then back to the dog brush again. Do the same on the back side. Ok, now we are setting up the side. We figure out where the windows are going to go here. Using the foam board as a spacer. We can see how big we want the sides to be. Here I am putting the foam blocks on the side of the house. Once again you probably wouldn't have to, but I use it as a way to kind of help hold things together, and to make sure it doesn't move around. It is good to use a square, to try to make sure our house is square on all the walls. There is not as much to do on the sides. Just put one on the bottom and one on the top and then the sides will hold it in gonna make sure everything is square here. 
cleaning off the concrete, since the last time we used it. The neat thing about this stuff is, you can reuse over and over, you do not have to keep making it all the time. Now, you need to do the same as you did on the front and the back. You just do the same on the sides. You fill it up with rocks. I did not glue the windows down, I probably should have but I was in a hurry. It seems like whenever I go to pour it is almost time to eat so I rush around and try to get it done as fast as possible. I do not want to miss supper, as that, would be a tragedy. Seriously though, the main reason is, I want it to dry overnight so it will be ready in the morning. I sprayed a little bit of water in there to help that it does not get so dry. Oops, I forgot to put my caps on. This mix I will mix up a little runny, so it goes into the cracks better. Here I am vibrating it again. I forgot to mention that my door, is made from a mold. I just cast it. The mold I bought on Amazon. You could make the door by hand, but the mold was cheap and it does save me time not having to make it. For the price the mold it was worth it to me. It was under $10. And there we go. Wipe a little of the excess off, and once again. We have extra concrete. So we use it to make blocks. I pour it on a piece of foam so it will be easy to move once I pour it. And there is another 12 or 13 blocks that we have made of what would have just been thrown away in the garbage. So, it's always nice to have your mold handy. If it is soupy on top, you can put some concrete on the top to help soak it in. Not sure how this new concrete is gonna work. Seems really green yet. This is about an half an hour later. I need to fix around the windows. Okay, here it is the next day. It still looks pretty green. But this is the new concrete which I haven't used before. Of all the pores, this one is the most fragile. Because the wall is just hanging there, so you have to be very careful. The third wall is still in a very green stage. Careful, careful. Oh man, it broke. Disaster. Well, it would be a miracle if this house stays together and it did not. I will tell you what I was thinking at that time, 
it was about to end up in the garbage. Let's watch that in slow motion. It was about to end up in the garbage. But I thought, this would be a good teaching moment. And so, we will try to fix it. What I want to do is get all the mortar off on the backside before it gets hard. If I waited until the next day there is a chance that it would be really hard to get off. So we scrape it and then, put it back together. And we decided that pouring those windows that close without any support it was probably not the best thing to do. Especially with this kind of concrete. Now. We're going to take out the windows. And we're gonna pour a new wall to fix the old wall. It will be thick on one side, but you will not see it as it will be on the inside. So let's see if we can fix this up so it's not so noticeable. I would hate to just throw the whole thing away. I think we can salvage it. This time we're gonna put a board on the top, and use it as a brace. The clamp will help us too. We will use some anti-crack reinforcements. And this time we're gonna use hot concrete. I hate putting wire in these things, as I seem to cut myself and scratch myself on it. That is the reason I was trying to do it without any wire. I was trying to find a way to do it without having to use reinforcements. I did not want to use the hardware cloth. I found this fiberglass reinforcement fibers. A pound is for one yard of concrete. Which is about 70 bags that you buy at the store, so it will go a long way. All you need is just little pinch. In each of your mixes. Which is probably a lot more than what they use, but having a little extra will not hurt. What I do here is mix it up with the dry concrete first. Then mix it in with your water. Once again this turntable comes in really handy. Imagine trying to work around this broken wall without a turntable. As you see here, I am putting the rocks inside where the windows were. We will try to make it look like a solid wall, or where they remodeled and took out the windows. I'm trying to pack in the hole and make sure the concrete goes all the way down in the crack. I use a temperature gauge to watch the concrete cure. At first it will heat up, and then it will return to room temperature. Once that happens it is pretty much set up, and you can start moving it around. I will say I was a little apprehensive here. I didn't know for sure what was gonna happen, but it looks like we succeeded. There, you can see my double wall. Now, comes the scary part, I have to take off the clamp and roll it over. This is the most fragile move of any paw, and with what happened with the wall, I was holding my breath. This is what the wall looks like when it's green and raw. Looks like it's going to be alright. You need to remove the concrete now, while it is in the green stage. I really did not like working on this while it was still green, but it is a necessary thing. Here I am using the dog brush again, but not with a whole lot of pressure. So now, you do the same thing on the other side. Except we do not want to break it this time. So we did not put windows on the other side either. Not knowing how this would turn out, we did not want to take the time. Now we are going to fix the top. Make sure we put rocks in all these cracks. Vacuum out all the cracks, spray my water in there, and then mix up some cement. I am going to make this a little runny this time so it flows nice into the cracks. 
Stick some rocks back in the holes and fill it up. Use a sponge again, and do like you would do if you were grouting. Cement did not get down in all the cracks and some of the rocks are missing, but we can fix that. This dog brush really works really good for this. Now, we will try to make the other side look like this side. Concrete was pretty hard already, because it's been a couple days. Now it is looking pretty good. Yep, mission accomplished, we were able to save it. Now we have to fix the back side. Put some rocks in where they are missing. We also spray some water on so it does not dry out as fast while pouring. This once again we are using the quick crete vinyl patcher cement. Once it gets a little hard you can just, brush it off with a dog brush, or any kind of flat brush. The brush takes off the top, but leaves the cement in the cracks. Trying to get the mortar off the cornerstones here. This little cradle or manger I made to hold the house when we do the roof. It is made at the same 90 degree angle as the roof. Without this it would be very hard to put your house roof on. Here we are marking out our roof on the foam. One thing to note, you need to make your sides of the roof at least one inch larger than your house or it will end up being too small. This, I learned the hard way. The thickness of the foam takes away from the size of the roof, so you need to make it bigger. Here is what it looks like when you are done. 
you can put a little LED light in here to have it shine through. A simple solar light would work too. I wish I could show you more about the roof construction, but my memory card messed up and I lost the footage. I will try to find one from another pore and put that in here so you can see the process. Here is the detail of the door. I forgot to mention, the door was made from a mold that I bought on Amazon. You could make your own, but this was less than $10 and it saved me a lot of time. Making the roof, I used a floor mat that had ribs in it. I wrapped it with pre-stretched pallet wrap to keep the concrete from sticking. It is one of those entrance mats. You make your mold and pour one side, let it harden, then flip it up and pour the other. Always making sure that you're straight with the speed square. I will try to get some video for that. This is what the ribs look like. Good news. I was able to find a time lapse video of me making a roof. Hopefully there will be enough information here to help you complete it. I used the fast concrete on this and you can see it dries very fast. Once it is hard, you lay it in the cradle and set your house on top. You can then mark where your roof is going to be and then use mortar to attach it in place. I spread mortar on the inside, in all the cracks. I usually put gloves on and do it with my hands as it is easiest that way. Once this is done you can fill in around the outside of the roof, between the roof and the walls. Once done it will be all connected. Here is the other house completed, as you see, the windows made it in this version. Here is some more footage of the roof process. So hope you enjoyed this process of making a little concrete fairy house. I love to make things out of concrete, as it lasts a very long time. I know some little concrete houses that have lasted 80 or more years. And these should last longer than that. Make sure you sign and date your house on the inside, so future generations will know who did it and when it was done. So there you go. We made it. Our next video will be of a church with real stained glass windows. I think you will like how it turns out. Thanks for looking, please like and subscribe and click the bell so you know when the video is up. Once again thanks for watching.